They're right now they're set for some some clothes for Chikali and for Professor and for Doctor Weiswald. So yeah, they can yeah. and Ophelia. Uh, yeah, Ophelia is real cold, <laughs> real cold. So oh, uh, she, she, she like, I want to stay in the church. She does kind of want to stay in the church. Uh, right. She'll go with you guys if you want her to. As long as you can do it. Jack West took off. Yes, uh, you spot Jack West this. heading down towards what you think <laughs> is the house across the creek from the telegraph office. Because the telegraph office, the, uh, the telegraph office is the only house that really has a line that runs to it, electric she line. Uses that it's easy to pick out. So uh, it says Zorax Mine Company over the front. Zorax Mine. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, that's one of the questions I wanted to know. Right. Here we go. What is this Zorax Coal Company. Uh, who are you asking? Are you asking no, no, her? That's, not, that's not what I wanted to know. Okay. But so, like, um, I see a Zorak, she's I pointed out. She pointed that out as the telegraph office to you. You were close enough to hear that. You spot across the creek and then a house, and there's a small barn or something behind it. That'd be this one. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's the house on the hill. That's further up from the rest of the houses. Um, okay, so you guys, it'll be a, it'll be a little while before they've got close for you. Gotta be prepared. You're waiting for boots too. Yeah, they're willing to. If you guys want to go get some, gear. there's a couple of people over here that's like, can you look for blah blah blah? You know, that was in the bag. Well, not they're willing to come. <laughs> I'm I just said I could set that woman's bag on fire. It's done a lot. It's like four or five people who are like, I will agree with you as much as I can. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I need it for it my baby. It didn't set on fire, so it's fine. <laughs> it's all scorched on the inside. Maybe. Um, so you two are together. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm and Jack West, you see, is kind of walking towards yeah. that house across the creek. Yeah. Let's deal with you two first. Yeah. You're going to head for the telegraph office? Yeah. Yeah, it's all good with you. Okay. Um, what are you up to, Stoloy? Let's not notice those. Zorex Coal Company. Yeah. Um, and I go, aha, that's why the town's here. Yeah, probably. Um, there is a line that runs to the, tel- to, to the building. The front door is open. Or it's unlocked. Uh, there's a man inside. Uh, you find out that he is... Oh, I just had his picture here. There he is. There he is. He's Clyde Johnson. Clyde Johnson. Or Clyde Johansson. Johansson. Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. I need, I need, I need telegraphs about Spider-Man. <laughs> he says, "Well, I, I already wired the, t- the uh, I already wired the, the railroad company about the crash. Uh, if if you want, uh, it's five cents a word to send a wire." I actually want to know about last year's crash. La- there was a there was a crash last year. Yes, sir. It was right about the same time. I think it might have been on the 23rd as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was bad, but nobody died. Um, the train was going a little too fast. And nobody died? There was died? a lot of snow. Nobody died. Zero. I don't think so. I'd have to look it up. Uh, Zilch? Um, you notice that he's got, like, ink on his fingers? Yeah. Uh, he's wearing uh, he's wearing a shade, eye shade. Did uh, any of the people... He says, you know, we can look in the newspaper. Oh, sure. I'm the one who does the newspaper here about... Yeah. Uh, uh, I love the newspaper. Oh, uh, it's 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 you it's very nice. Uh, we can look it up. That'll be right around the twenty third. Uh, that's the I call it the Falls Rundown. Get they it? They do like, run down. Well, no, 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 not that. But you know, like a rundown. When you tell somebody what's going on, you give them the rundown. Do you get it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And also falls fall. I, feel like, um, I didn't think of that. But. Auto is like smirks. <laughs> okay. But he quickly loses. Yeah, I, I hear it. Come on. It's in the back the back room. He's got a print, printing press set up. There is a, there's a, he's got all the, the stuff. It looks like it's a one-page newspaper. You know what I mean? And it looks like it's a weekly. He puts it out every Friday. And most of it's stuff like, you know, this is... Mrs. Uh, Butler's pig is missing. If someone could tell her where it is, it's that kind of shit for the most part. You take care of this, Deloitte. I'm gonna go get a horse. Who oh, do? Okay. And I walk out. To go oh, you want to check with? Uh, you want to? You want to ch- check with? Uh, uh, with? You want to check with Reuben Turner? He's got a horse. And Doctor Zorak. Doctor Zorak's an atheist, though. So be careful about him. He don't. He don't. He don't believe Doc, in nothing. Doctor owns the mine. No, he's just a doctor. But what? isn't it the Zorak Mining Company? No, his, his name is not Zorax. His name, I'm oh, sorry, Kurak. It's ah! Dr. Kurak. Yeah, Dr. Kurak. I understand getting names wrong like that. I shouldn't. I'm a newspaper man. There's my press. Okay, uh, so you start looking through the old... He's got all the old copies. And if you look around Christmas, you don't even have to make a library use check to find... Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> to find... Uh, here we go. This was written, he actually put out an extra, he put a special out, Ooh, on special. December 25th last year. 
There you go. You can either read it or you can let someone else read it. <laughs> I taste the words. Why are you looking Did at the Did I gain the information yet? Here, you want me to read it to you, <laughs> Yor? Thank you. <laughs> It'll take me eons. B&O Crash brings Christmas guests to Falls Run. No one in our peaceful village is unaware of the railroad derailment, which brought nearly 200 travelers to stay in Falls Run over the Christmas holiday. On Wednesday night, the westbound train from Baltimore struck a broken rail and plowed into the snowbank one mile south of town. Miraculously, no one aboard the train was seriously injured, even though several cars turned over on, turned on their sides in the crash. Churchgoers rallied to prepare a meal for the passengers on the night of the crash. The town shared a holiday supper at the church on Christmas Eve. Hopes are that tonight or at the latest tomorrow, these good folks will be sped on their way to their homes and families. So it's a very simple little... Alright, and then I ask him, uh, did anybody, uh, any of the passengers that he might have interviewed for the newspaper, even if it sounds completely irrelevant to anything he thinks is newsworthy, did they say about anything weird happening on the train the night before the crash? Uh, no, sir. No, but you know what? One of them came up missing later. One of the one of the one of the the passengers just kind of disappeared. Don't, don't count that as a death. No, no, no. He was here in town. Mm -hmm. And then, but but then he never got back to to Cincinnati where they were going. Wait, hold on. I think I wrote a story about that. Uh, it was a couple days later. Uh, uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, this one's from January 1st, they wrote, Friday, January 1st. Uh, and you read it, it says, Missing rail passenger stumps Constable Wells. All of us here in the town are certain to remember Edward Gravitz, a journalist among the nearly 200 B&O train passengers who spent Christmas in Falls Run last week. Mr. Gravitz brought himself to the attention of many in the village with his persistent questions. His apparently inability to ride out the snowstorm, which held the passengers here for four days, was regarded with amusement by many locals, irritation by others. Edward Gravitz has been missing since the train arrived from Grafton to pick up the strain of passengers. It is believed that Mr. Gravitz did not board the train. Mr. Gravitz's fiancée, Miss Jane Carpenter of Cincinnati, wired the B&O offices in Baltimore last Monday morning when the replacement train arrived in Cincinnati without Gravitz aboard. The railroad was unable to account for Mr. Gravitz's absence from the train and wired Constable David Wells here in Falls Run to inquire. Constable Wells promised an investigation, and he's been busily asking questions in the weeks since. To no avail. Constable Wells has turned up no clues as to the location of Mr. Gravitz. Naturally, anyone with information to offer that might help clear up this mystery is urged to contest, contact Constable Wells with great haste. David Gravitz? Uh, yeah, I think that's what I said. Okay, we'll go with David Gravitz. Okay, so yes. So Mr. Gravitz apparently was here and then just never got back on the train. What sort of questions was he constantly asking? I don't remember. He just seemed to be real curious about everything. He was he was asking about. Uh, he didn't ask me anything. I think it was professional jealousy. But mm -hmm. he he seemed to just be interested in every, what what was happening in town. I think he was bored. He was bored and he'd walk around trying to stir up trouble or trying to find out some dirt on somebody. He obviously, it was a year ago. He doesn't really recall. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, Ben. For good help. I'm going to go You're see welcome. the doctor. Okay, so you're the first one to arrive at the Reuben Turner residence, which is uh, number eight. Uh, it, you knock on the door. There's fiddle playing coming from inside. Uh, and you knock on the door and it stops. And gentleman and Reuben Turner, he's out here. Uh, that's Al Fisher, uh, wherever he is. And he answers the door and greets you out. Oh, you're one of those fellows from the train. Yes, indeed. Uh, I was wondering if I could possibly uh, rent out your sled and horse so I could get some of the baggage that was all spilled out for the, oh. the train goers. I guess if you want. What what would that be worth? Is ten dollars sufficient? <laughs> Plenty. All right, come on. <laughs> Let me get dressed. Come on in. Come on in. You see, uh, Jack West is heading I'm into the house. Right. Okay. Uh, the door closes before you get there. I mean, yep, you are too minutes. Again. Okay. Uh, Ruben Turner answers. He's got. He's he's pulling on. He's pulling his jacket on. He's got boot on one foot. Oh, well, you're another one, fellas, from the train. Yeah, Deputy Marsh. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Can I help you? I wanted to rent a horse to go back to the train. Oh, uh, this, this fellow here has already rented it. He points to Jack West, who is. Uh, <laughs> uh, He's back there. There's uh, there's some children uh, clustered around him. 
uh, from ages like probably five or six to maybe 12, 13 years old. What happened to your face? <laughs> it's a mask, dummy. It's not a mask. Say something. Blow a hole. Blow. Do like this. Blow as hard as you can. <laughs> anyway, that's what's happening to him. Such odd children. <laughs> hey, leave that man alone. Do you know? Uh, I suppose y'all could go together if you want. I only have the oh, one horse and sleigh. Oh, you know each other? Oh, yes. it solves everything. Let me get my boots on. I gotta get the horse. Okay, so it's sufficient. They're gonna rig up. I kind of guess you're from my own building. Uh, yeah, you think so. you're gonna be chilly if yeah. you stay out there too long. But, um, uh, but my desk turn and boots on, so. Uh, you don't want to stay out more than a couple yeah, hours. But I probably won't be out there. Okay. Right. Um, doc, oh, okay, you guys got your gear. They bought you some heavy coats. Um,. Uh, uh, not snowshoes, but some some really tall boots. Uh, they're real, so they don't really fit real well. Uh, one 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 lady, one they start handing you socks. Wearing them for they're like, like just no, two, here, so. put on as many socks till they fit you. Five layers uh, of socks. Same with uh, you know that Jane is also uh, is all. Didn't you? You're getting some gear too, right? So Jane's also there getting gear. And there's people asking you if they'll if you pick up. Oh, can you get this? Did you see What's this? your shoe in the boot? If you see this present, uh, one guy's like the. There's a box. It's about seven foot by three foot by three no. foot. <laughs> no, make sure it's okay. That's all I want. Okay. That's my brother in there. I'm taking him home. So if you can just make sure it's not busted open or something. If it is, let me know. I'll Terrible present. Have to go out there. You're not there. Shut up. <laughs> okay. So you guys get outfitted and can head that way. As you're walking down that way, um, you spot these two. Coming out of a house in that general direction down here at 19, 18, uh, and they're going to the barn. And it looks uh, and uh, it looks like uh, they're they just see the, the owner, Ruben Turner again. You recognize him? Just throws open the barn doors. And it looks like they're starting to, to hitch up uh, a horse to the sleigh. Three feet of snow. I don't know how well this is going to go. Yeah, we'll find out. Okay, just don't leave it out there. Uh, so he's working on that. So you guys are going to actually have a head start on them, and then we'll see. And then uh, who's driving? I'll drive. Okay. okay, give me a drive wagon. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not going to crash. It's not like you're like... It's just three feet of snow. <laughs> There's a lot of snow, and you're going to be struggling. And then it's to see if you guys get there first. <laughs> no. I okay. okay, so it's slow. And you're plowing, you're plowing through this deep snow. You guys are going to actually... You three arrive first. Uh, oh, there is a lot of on the way back. Just be like, see ya. <laughs> there's a lot of gar- There's a lot of baggage still in in the ends of this. It's like somebody broke it in half and like scattered a bunch out. There's a ton more that's out. A lot of it's covered with snow. Um, it's probably gonna be a few hours work. You could probably get back to town by noon. Um, okay. I'm gonna need regular spot hiddens to search, unless you can think of a better skill to use to search for these things. Uh, yeah. You guys arrive maybe half an hour after them. Survival yeah. mountains. You see that the three women are already working on survival mountains. Is that higher than your spot hidden? No, oh, come okay. on! You missed it by one. Yeah. There's know? a coin out on the table. Yes, oh, you guys can also it. do a spot hidden. So, uh. Kyle, you can find your stuff. Essentially, do find that box that guy was talking about. The yeah. lid has been pulled up. Like, okay, no, no, it's like nailed shut. But yeah, you could like push it back down in place. Um, um, I'm gonna grab my suitcase and from my bunk or wherever it is. Don't even get sand. Do you want to? The suitcase I had under my bunk. Oh, in the car, yeah, you I can find that. That's just like a few rolls or a duffel bag. Of right. Stuff in there. These rolls for spot hidden or for like gear that was find in the baggage right car. Uh, that's a hard. Okay, okay. Yeah, you find the rifle. You find all your like, stuff. Auto's so happy again. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'll just got his So I found my stuff. You found your stuff. You found your guns. Um, that were with your buff. Your oh, yeah. can, I, can, can, can I start looking for the stuff? No, I look. I just always passed it. You made hard. Yes, I want you to make another roll. Did you find your stuff? Did you search for your stuff? Yeah, I got it. You got it. What about Jane? Did Jane find her stuff? Okay, at least found everything. Did you make yours? No. You did not find Steloid stuff. Okay. And, and you do find some of the other on. items <laughs> okay. that people were asking about. Mostly, some of them were Christmas presents. Why just change the clothes in there? Um, actually, yeah. um, who's that, where's that lady? Uh, Miss, Miss, uh, Adelia, uh, Haberin, who was across the, asked you if you could find certain specific 
mm-hmm. presence, uh, which you did find. Uh, I'll do that for, for free. Um, I'm just grabbing all the tracks stuff. around train, like not heading it towards the direction of the town. Oh. No, no, there's no tracks in the train. You so no one's been here, Nobody so. has been here. Uh, most of the tracks around the train are from the passengers and you guys going looking for your step earlier. And those are covered with snow already, but you can see the little windows. You don't see any other tracks around the train at all. There's no sign that anybody's been in this crash. Uh, the engines are not burning anymore, obviously. Is it destroyed or did it explode? What? No, no, no. They just they burnt out. Okay. Um, everything just went. It looked like they hit a curve and the whole train just did this number. They had a curve at way too high speed for whatever reason. There are a few bodies in the engines uh, still. Nobody recovered any of the bodies the night before. People were they a little are, preoccupied. Course. Some were burnt to death, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm grabbing just other luggage and stuff that I'm seeing. You find that pink, uh, there's that pink valise. That was one of the things that somebody asked to bring. You see Jack West is holding it. Again. <laughs> I just toss it into the sled with everything else. Okay, so you're just grabbing yeah, some people's stuff. Okay, you guys can grab just random stuff and put in the sled in addition to the stuff you've been asked to find. Uh, and you pushed closed the... You could see the coffin was inside that box, and that's when you went... I might have said this is a terrible lantern. Terrible what? Lantern, as I threw the... Lantern? The bag. The bag that he tried to lay on. Because it never lit on fire. Yes, because it was a terrible idea. Okay. Uh, okay, and then you guys can head back. You'll be back to town around noon. Um, looks like everybody found everything that they were looking for, plus a few things. Okay. Plus randomness. What? Pillaging for silver? Pillaging for silver? Yeah, in the dining car. Uh, uh, did anybody even know about Nobody even knew about Stoyd asking about that. No. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll yeah. know about silver. Yeah. I'll ask for metal trays. Yeah, metal trays. Don't even, still don't know why. Uh, anyway, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I, I, I know why. Oh, I know why. Oh, it's kind of obvious. Because it's reflective. No. No. I wanted snowshoes. No. I wanted snowshoes. That's why I wanted that. But the one train half. <laughs> that is a half. good idea. Yeah. I, I didn't get that. Um, that Flat one, Yeah, the one train half wouldn't have worked very well. Okay. Okay, so Stoy, we're going to quick deal with you with uh, with Dr. Corey. Okay. Um, there is a nice um, residence on the hillside. Um, the, the It is answered by a woman... Um, I don't believe Louise Cork. Is she out there? There's so many people out there. Let's see if she's in the pile. There she is. It is answered by this lady here, uh, who asks, uh, you know, uh, she, she's kind of acting as a receptionist kind of thing, um, and asks how she can help you. So, well, how does she greet me? Uh, yeah, can I help you? Oh, Dr. Cork, I presume. Uh, no, sir. I'm, I'm his wife. Uh, oh, okay. I do need, if you need to see Dr. Cork, I can, I can fetch him. He is in his, work, in his office. Well, let me ask you first. Um, and I ask some of those questions I asked the newspaper person. Did, it, did the, anybody say yes. anything weird happen on the train before? No. Did what the guy that went missing, what, what kind of questions was he asking around town? She didn't actually talk to him. Okay. She heard he was asking. He's just asking basic questions of people. Um, he seemed very curious about basic questions. It's Victorian era, asking you if your ankle, if you if you have pretty ankles, could be invasive. Uh, I don't know. She I'll doesn't know either. I'll, I'll so that's why we go. The okay. Uh, yes, he's happy to meet you. Nice. Um, <laughs> okay. He has no information either. Oh. Um. Uh, here. Let me detail. I asked him what the chances are that everybody on a train of that size would <laughs> not be harmed whenever uh, a crash is significant to this. No, he, from what he understands, the train kind of just slid off the tracks and into oh, the okay. snow bank. Um, he's not surprising. They weren't even moving that quickly because they curved down there. That's it's not surprising that. Uh, it's not surprising that. Uh, Okay. Uh, it's not surprising that there were no injuries. Uh, the train wasn't moving at great speed at that time. Uh, apparently, your train last night was, from my understanding. We heard the crash. Yeah, it wasn't young. Uh, so, hey, what do you want? What do you want? So, it's it's not too surprising. Um, you make some small talk with him. He uh, has some brandy with you. Um, what does the ape get me? Uh, he, uh, you do learn that um, uh, it, during small talk, his wife comes in and um, the off, both of them talk to you. And you learned that uh, Paul Booth, Thelma's husband, ran off last uh, month with a singer at the church's Thanksgiving fair. 
leaving her with five young children to take care of by herself and no steady income. The old, oldest son, Don, is only nine. And folks in town have been ha helping take care of her, but her people are in Martin Ferry, Ohio. So that kind of bit of gossip comes to you uh, during your little visit with the corks. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the clock and you realize an hour and a half has passed and you've just been chattering away with these people just about nothing of any real importance. Um, Leonard Falls Run is a mining town. Uh, for the for Corex Mining Company. Okay. Oh wait, is there a Corex? Wait, did you switch the names again? Damn it, Zorex. Oh, You're right, right Zorex. Can I? Uh, Zorex Mining Company. Can I go to the Zorex Mining Company building? Uh, he points you to the telegraph office. Says that's where uh, the man works out of. But the main building is in Grafton. Uh, he usually comes in, but he doubts that he's going to make it during line? this weather. Uh, up there, it's on. A, uh, he points up the run, mm -hmm. and you can see uh, a setup. Uh, a little to the west of town, up on the hillside. So you also see like a rail that runs from it. Well, no, you don't. But he tells you about the rail that runs from it. It's covered in snow right now. There's a rail that runs from it down to the, the main line, and they, they can move carts full of coal down there uh, through the putting on trains or selling or moving to Grafton for selling. Is anybody uh, over there right now, I ask? Uh, he doubts it very much. It's a holiday. Okay. It's the day before Christmas, and uh, with the blizzard and everything, uh, he tells the reverend didn't even make it into town. And he doubts that there will be that he'll be here for the work, service. Work there? Everybody pretty much in town works there. Most of the miners. Most um, of the miners are men. Yes. Right. Um, he notes that uh, there's uh, one of the one of the one of the wives is a midwife. She's given birth to pretty much everybody in town uh, because they don't trust uh, him. Uh, oh, because he's an atheist. Uh, I'm not an atheist. Sir. I'm Presbyterian. Oh. I don't go to church at the Baptist church here. Oh, they you just, did hear that they, he was an atheist. They yes. call you an atheist just because you're not Baptist? They call me an atheist because they don't know. Uh, I'm newer to town. We've only been here for about ten years, and that's not long enough for us to be townsfolk. Uh, so uh, I'm not generally trusted in town, but I do try my best. Oh, here he is. He's got a mustache. I tell him that's awfully rude of them, and they should treat him better. Well, people are as they are. I try to help them out in any way that I can. But we go up. Uh, we go to the Presbyterian Church up in. Uh, where is the rumor? He names a nearby town. Uh, uh, and they're not Baptists, so they don't go to, they don't, they're they not seen going to church, so probably people think that they don't go. Oh. You and they have a carriage and a horse. He doesn't have a sled or anything. It's useless to stand here. So you have a real nice conversation with him, though. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he, notices there's a, he notes there's a seamstress in town, a uh, cobbler, uh, Couple other uh, somebody who does taxidermy, uh, that kind of thing. I'll go see the taxidermist. Okay. Uh, you find out the taxidermist is Ron. Wait, no, no, it's not. Uh, Joe Walker. Joe Walker stuffs carcasses is what and makes them look nice. Yeah. He says he thinks there's one down by the uh, the sleeping wolf bar and grill. He thinks that there that uh, he thinks one's down there, and, he, and he's not sure what happened to the other one. Uh, probably, probably Joe Walker kept it. What carcasses? A couple of wolves. Uh, Ron Eiler, who's up at the top of the run, uh, he's killed a couple of wolves since uh, since since the, just this winter. He's kind of the first line of defense for the town because mm -hmm. when wolves come in, they usually come down the run, and his house is at the very top of the run. So if it, he's the one who kind of he's the first line of defense, so he kind of keeps us safe from wolves. We get a few, not too many, but he's killed two this winter already. Any, any odd creatures you find? I, I, I try to show interest as of, like, any jackalopes or anything? Well, he just laughs at all. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. No, nothing odd. We have a few wolves occasionally, foxes, rabbits, just a regular for West Virginia. He does have an accent. Sorry, I'm not really giving him one. Any sightings of Bigfoot? Who? I don't know. Bigfoot's not really known throughout the continental United States, except for very locally. In gotcha. The Certain native tribes would know of him, probably. Okay. Anything else you want to talk to this guy about? Okay. Uh, so you head he back... Do you any particular questions that the one guy was yes. saying around town? He doesn't. You already asked that. Okay. Uh, you head out, you spot a sleigh coming back into so town. Were talking to the taxidermist just then, or was it Denver? You haven't, been to, you haven't left the doctor's office yet. I, I said I was telling you about I all these... I said I yes. yes. the You leave the house to go to the taxidermist, and you spot a sleigh coming into town... You spot Jacali and right. Weiswald and uh, Jane uh, Bloomberg, yeah. uh, Blomberg, behind yeah. it. Uh, well, actually, you're going to fill a sleigh with as much stuff as you can so only the driver can fit? Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, Jack West is also falling behind. Are you st you're still driving, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Otto, give me another check just to see how well you do. Well, it's this is hard weather. <laughs> okay, so Otto's having some difficulty coming back with the slow. Slow. Yeah, it's just slow. Uh, you guys get back to town a little before noon. I don't really want to hurt the poles. Um, right, right. And this sleigh is just like plowing through the snow as opposed to actually riding on top of it. I uh, info vomit the knowledge of uh, that there was one passenger missing uh, last year. Okay, you've got the two articles too. He gave you those papers. Yeah. And, and that I looking. think that the man that's missing might be our culprit of the ghost man. I think that makes sense to me. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Whatever. But why? Why sorry. would he be hunting the, rifle. the train? I don't know. He didn't die on it, as according to the townspeople. But also according to the townspeople, he never made it out of the town. Sounds to me like we've got a missing detail on what's. Which also originally they told me no one died, but then they revealed this missing person. I consider that a death. Missing people are not considered deaths. You're a cop. Missing people are not considered deaths. You know, in my line of business, it does. Well, the law's <laughs> definition of it. <laughs> They're yeah. not considered dead. Yeah. 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 Explain law to towns where spiders crawl out of holes and kidnap people. Well, I understand that. I'm just explaining it from there. If we hadn't, if we hadn't shown up, they would all be dead. I realize that. But missing. <laughs> but most people don't realize these things happen. I say dead until found missing. <laughs> well, I agree that he probably died, but... Oh my God. Legally, <laughs> until we find them. So you guys yeah. figure your way to the church, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. I also point out he is a ghost. He is definitely dead. <laughs> I agree with you, but I'm saying until we find them, he cannot be legally declared dead. All right. You guys get to the church. Some, the uh, some of the ladies who are still there. Well, actually, most of the ladies have gone back home. They've got their legal story. People come out to get their stuff. Oh, um, I do a real good job. <laughs> Uh, the lady with the baby is super grateful about bringing this police. She's like, it smells like smoke. Um, <laughs> I think we found it like a the... spark cupped Oh, Probably a lantern right. in the luggage carriage. Do what? Probably a lantern in the luggage oh, carriage oh. or something. Um, the, the Mrs. Holloway, or Mrs. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Haberlane takes the presents, tries to be kind of surreptitious about it, so the children don't see, obviously, they're surreptitious. They're for the children. Uh, other people thank you. The gentleman, uh, the gentleman's wearing a duster uh, who had asked you about checking on the big box. Uh, let's see. We've got it here somewhere. Uh, every time I go to look for something, it's gone. This has got to be it. Anyway, he thanks you for, for checking in on his brother, and he appreciates you closing up the box for the casket. And there he is. Did we bring the Virgil box? leg. No, no, no. He didn't want it brought. He just wanted to check on, make sure that like the corpse hadn't been flung out, so was, like right laying away. face down in the snow somewhere. So when you tell him what you found, and he pulls it back up. He, he doesn't want his grateful. brother to have frostbite on the face for the funeral. Or some animals to get to him, or anything like that. So anyway, he thanks you guys for that. The ladies are starting. The town ladies are starting to come back in to uh, to work on a to for the for big for a lunch thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. You don't see anything. No sign of any ghosts or anything of that guy. I want to ask people about the dinner they had last Christmas. Uh, the dinner? Yeah. It was. Uh, it was. It was. It was about like they're probably planning tonight. Um, they they had a they had a. Uh, people, a lot of people came in from town to help fix food, help uh, try to to make the people as comfortable as possible for as long as they were stuck here, uh, and that kind of thing. Did anyone come out of town for the celebration? No, no, no. There was a blizzard last year too, and so and nobody could come from out of town. They. I ask everybody about David Gravitz. Okay, you start asking everybody about David Gravitz. All right. If they remember um, anything he asked. 
Everybody can roll me a d10 if you're talking. If you're talking to townsfolk. I will. Mean. About Only about I'm assuming you're not because you don't care. My mood is greatly improved. Like That's true. Back. Here's Constable. So this is only for David Kravitz? I got no, six. This is if you're like being chatty with the townsfolk. Oh, no. I've got my stuff. I'm making yeah, sure it's all nice and said. good. If you're being chatty, you're starting to hear some rumors, especially from the ladies who I'll are here. I'll talk to him. I'm going to give him people back stuff anyway, so... Okay. Um, I'm going to turn the wagon, of course. Uh, you hear about Paul Booth, uh, Thelma's husband, who was... Uh, who. Uh, this ran off last month with a singer on the church Thanksgiving Fair, leaving her with her five young children to take care of by herself. No Jesus Christ. The oldest son, Don, is only nine. Folks in town have been helping to take care of her, but her people are in Martin Serio okay. So that's a way he's too far away for her to just like go back to where her people are. Who Six. else? You were chatting. Six. Uh, Lou Ann Fisher, the blacksmith's eldest daughter, is a girl of low morals. <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs> Did you you were chatting people up? Did you make a roll in your way? Um, yeah, a one. Oh, you were specifically talking. But about I was Gravitz. also asking about Brett. Okay. Um, you don't care. Were you asked? Were you chatting with people? Okay. I don't know about. Uh, I'm also looking for women. Um, uh, you know, last Thursday, mm-hmm. I heard that everybody in the Sleeping Wolf Tavern seems to have fallen asleep at the same time. That was say Sleeping Wolf Tavern. That happened on the train. Yeah. Okay. What are you talking about? I don't know. Oh, okay. I feel like the way over here is... You're spreading more rumors. I heard that everybody fell on the train. Don't sleep at the same time. The way over here is... That's, that's what it seemed like to me. Oh, yeah. You would overhear that at some point. I was looking over the body, and then I woke up. Uh, you're asking about Gravitz. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, he was snooping around. He was asking a lot of questions. Uh, it was kind of funny, actually. Because people around here just kind of... You know... They're, they're laid back and slow moving, and here yeah. he is, fussing. It's like he couldn't stand still for five seconds. You mean like me? I didn't say that. Um, but he, you know, I think he, um, Doris, Doris Cutler. Doris Cutler was following him around. She's 19. She was bored, probably. And so she was, she was following him around a lot. I'll find her. Okay, you can go start looking for her. Is she the wild and loose? Uh, no. no, that's not the blacksmith star. Um, let's see. I don't think we got a name for blacksmith. Okay, there's, it looks like almost everybody in town is here. So, okay. So you got all the ladies. All the ladies are back in town helping. Uh, you're looking for a Doris Cutler, right? A lot of, most of the men have come in at noon as well to help out and that kind of thing. Uh, so here's all our ladies, some that you guys have not seen before. Most of them you have. Train in. Uh, there's this lady with glasses. All right, stop. I'll turn to you. Lee Glenn Fisher is the glasses daughter of this moral character, allegedly. Uh, there's a lady you haven't seen yet before. Um, and if you ask around, here's Doris Cutler. You learn that's 19-year-old Doris Cutler. Uh, Johansson, Johnson's not here. He's, uh, well, yeah, Johnson is coming, too. He's kind of, he's there as well. So I'm looking for Doris Cutler. Right there. Right there. Constable Wells right, is here. Oh, Ruben Constable Turner. Constable. Dr. Cork and his family are not here. Well, yeah, they're not bad. I don't know. What? <laughs> Well, if you're not fat, you don't care about train crash. T.J. Miller. Yeah. the rules. What's the rules? Al. Here's Ron Eiler. This is a big town. Uh, there's one man who seems kind of slow. Uh, yeah, exactly. Zachary Butler. Uh, there's Larry Lucas. He seems to be drunk. Uh... <laughs> Sheriff yeah. Sarah Johnson's there. You realize you find out that that's uh, a lot Johnson's. Of, I, I think this is the most amount of people we've ever had on board. Denise Fisher. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Lady okay. named Sue Miller. She's new. Rhonda Wheel, Doris Turner. We're gonna have to kill everyone in town, York. <laughs> There's a lot of people in this take, town. Take note of all the names. We can't this miss a single one. This count the 120 train passengers. I, yeah. I got a bunch of more train passengers here. If you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just start laying them down. <laughs> I like this picture. I think that was great. 
Okay, so, um, Sorry. yeah, and then 120 train posts. These are the people from town, and they are easy to see. The people from the train are better dressed. Mm. These people are dressed kind of shabbily, simply. Yeah. Um, it's a cold Yes, now. okay. Uh, Weissfall, are you chatting it up with people? Do you want to room? Yes. Give me a Z10 roll. Hey, go give me the toy. Give me the toy. Six. Number six. Uh, roll me again. I'm going to give you a different one. Somebody's already had that one. I had that one. Okay. Yeah, you had that one. I want to try to get a different one. One. Number one. Somebody's already had it. Roll me again. Nine. Minus two. The Turner house is haunted. <gasps> the family is mentioned strange footsteps and door slamming, that sort of thing. This is what you hear. Wait, what house? The Turner house. What was the person who was on the phone? Uh, Cutler. Doris Cutler's the okay, young girl one. who was hanging out with, uh, oh, with Gravitz a year ago. Perfect. Not her house. Uh, do, do, do you find her to talk to her? Yeah. Um, okay, what are you going to say to her? How do you want to approach this? Oh, hold on. Let's